welcome to this week's vlog. Um, today I am going to have a little school on ooh, this little monkey here, Nilly. Um, I'm going to be honest with you guys, I've been really struggling schooling her recently. Um, since we've moved about three months ago probably now to the yard that we're at at the moment, she's been really, really spooky. She's usually Miss Reliable and pretty safe and I would have put, you know, my slightly novice husband on her um, but she's been really spooky I've been really struggling um, just to try and even you know do normal schooling of just getting around in water rock hunter um, I don't think it's helped that she's been switched on to haylage I think it's a little bit too much energy for her so just over the last couple of days I have switched her back onto hay um, and see if that helps at all um, we are due to move yards again at the end of the month now <laughs> It's not ideal. I didn't want to have to move again, but with everything going on with the coronavirus, um, I'm self-employed and so is my husband. So we have not been earning at all the last two weeks. I've not earned a single penny. Um, and it's a fairly expensive yard that I'm at at the moment. So we have found a DIY yard where it is not even a quarter of the price of what I'm paying now. Um, so yeah, we will be moving that end of April, which will help keep the cost down for us. It's a really nice little yard, it's got a school, it's got good hacking, um, and both ponies will have stable as well, which is ideal. Why isn't it legal? Um, because Lass was struggling during the winter being out with her feet. Um, say hello, Neil. So yeah, it would be nice to have her in a stable again and just see if we can, you know, help her with her feet situation. She has come sound at the moment, but I just worry about her being out a lot, that she just can't rest very well. So yeah, we'll get her back into a stable and I think that will help. So yeah, today we'll give her a little bit of a school. Like I said, I have been struggling slightly with the schooling. Um, I want to be completely honest with you guys. Um, Five-year-olds are not easy at all. I do think from doing the vlogs, it has made me look at my own riding a little bit as well and realize I am not so my bum enough. Um, I maybe am focusing too much about her you know, starting to be in a contact because she's nearly six, I'm not sure she'd be in a contact by now. So I think I'm going to take it completely back to basics um, and just go for the whole straight, forward, my position, everything else will come. Um, she's such a lovely little forgiving horse. Um, it's really hard when things aren't going right. Not that it's really bad, you know, I think sometimes I'm my worst critic as well. I like to sort of be quite judgmental about my riding. I'm quite good at picking things up quite quickly in life, but apart from riding, it's the one thing that I love the most and the one thing that I feel that I am not naturally talented at at all. Um, so it would just be nice to sort of look back at videos and go, do you know what, you rode okay then, your position was good and you couldn't ask any more of that. Um, but looking at the vlog that I posted the other day, I just felt like I was, you know, putting her onto her forehand because I was tilting so much and I think if you've been riding a youngster for a year you know it's quite difficult in the fact that they put you in funny positions um, and sometimes it's not until you look back at videos of yourself riding that maybe you realize oh actually I'm not in the best position there I am tipping on to the you know tipping her onto her forehand and and you know that's why vlogs are good because I want to use it to improve my riding and you know eventually we want to get eventing but tipping forward I'm going to be off straight away on the cross country course so you know it will help me in the long run doing this vlogging and being a little bit hard on myself to be able to say do you know what we got there it's okay and I'll be able to look back at these videos you know hopefully in a year's time when we've done our first BE80 and go look how far we've come you've done it and it's okay we got there.
that was a better ride. Finally, we had a better one. So, good girl. I tried not to ride like a sack of potatoes. Um, and I tried to think about actually having seat bones. They are there under my rather large bottom. They are in there somewhere. Um, and actually it was a lot better. We have a long way to go, don't get me wrong. My legs, lower leg, flapping about all over the place. But it was much better. So all I wanted was to be able to sit back in today's video and get soft hands, and that's what we did. So I just wanted to talk to you quickly about one of the products that I use. Um, some of you might have seen me earlier on in the week post about um, Red Horse products, and this is Arty Mud. Um, so it is like a clay putty. Um, it's really good for things like thrush. So before I took Lass Barefoot uh, last year, just as she was being diagnosed with navicular, she was really suffering with really bad thrush in both fronts. Um, it was slightly to do with the mineral balance in her diet as well, but the shoes weren't helping her at that point. Um, she got thrush so bad that it did end up cracking her heel um, in both fronts. So it wasn't helping with her not landing hill first and it was making her really, really sore. So um, I got recommended the Arty Mud on the Barefoot Horse Owners Facebook page. Um, and it's really nice. It's got some really lovely um, ingredients in it. It's got um, bioactive honey, zinc oxide, eucalyptus oil and French green clay so if I just show you what it looks like so this is a brand new tub but it's a really nice like just soft clay and it basically just stays in the hoofs really easily and um, they do do quite a few products for um, packing hooves especially if you've got abscesses and things they've got a few other products for that but this one in particular I find just for when they're turned out in the field whether it's muddy or whether it's dry um, it's quite nice because it stays around the frog quite nicely and I can put it over their hills as well um, and it's yeah it just stays in there you go back the next day and still see some of it in there so it's really nice um, because it's antibacterial so if you've already got thrush within the hoofs it will help to clear that up and also I use it just to keep the thrush at bay as well so usually I put it on every two to three days um, just put it in the hoof um, by the frog and like I said on the hill just to make sure that no bacteria is going to get into any little bits that are looking like they could open up um, and yeah I'll show you how I do that later on last. So you can see she's just a little bit soft just down by the frog, which is why she gets these white lines. She's not really too thrushy though, which is good. There's maybe a little bit in there, just as we dig a bit deeper there, we can see a little bit of a black line. So that's where we want to put the arty mud. And I also tend to put it just on the hill here. So once we've picked the hoof out enough, I just get a little bit of the clay, roll it into a little bit of a ball just to soften it. And I just push this in alongside the frog. Mm. 
So we're going to do that on all four, all four hoofs. <laughs> Nearly! 